for Sunday, February the 20th, 2022. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Aloysius Parish on this, the seventh Sunday in Ordinary Time. A warm welcome to all of you joining us from your homes and to our celebrant this morning, Father Zarkat Gapot. Readings this morning may be found on page 186 of your Sunday Missal. I invite everyone to stand. Our opening hymn is number 652. 652. Praise to the Lord the Almighty. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. O my soul, praise Him, for He is your health and salvation. All you who hear, now to the altar draw near, join in profound. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. mercy. At the right hand of the Father, you plead for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Glory to God in the highest, and on, and on earth, earth peace to people of goodwill. Good we, we praise you. We bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer you are seated at the right hand of the father have mercy on us for you alone are the holy one you alone are the lord you alone are the most high jesus christ with the holy spirit in the glory of god the father amen Amen. Amen. 
A reading from the first book of Samuel. Saul rose and went down to the wilderness of Ziph with 3,000 chosen men of Israel to seek David in the wilderness of Ziph. David and Abishai went into Saul's <coughs> army by night. There Saul lay sleeping within the encampment with a spear stuck in the ground at his head. And Abner and the army lay around him. Abishai said to David, God has given your enemy into your hand today, and therefore let me pin him to the ground with one stroke of the spear. I will not strike him twice. But David said to Abishai, Do not destroy him, for who can raise his hand against the Lord's anointed to be guiltless? So David took the spear that was at Saul's head and the water jar that they went away. No one saw it or knew it, nor did anyone awake. For they all were asleep, because a deep sleep from the Lord had fallen upon them. Then David went over to the other side and stood on top of the hill far away, with a great distance between them. David called aloud to Saul, Here is the spear, O king. Let one of your young men come over and get it. The Lord rewards everyone for his righteousness and his faithfulness. For the Lord gave you into my hand today, but I will not raise my hand against the Lord anointed. As your life was precious today in my sight, so may my life be precious in the sight of the Lord, and may he rescue me from all tribulation. Then Saul said to David, Blessed be you, my son David. You will do many things and will succeed in them. So David went his way, and Saul returned to his place. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the song is. The Lord is merciful and gracious. The Lord, the Lord is merciful and, merciful and gracious. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. The Lord is merciful and gracious. It is the Lord who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. The Lord, the Lord is merciful and, and gracious. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. The Lord is merciful and gracious. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. The Lord is merciful and gracious. A 
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, made of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the one of dust, so are those who are of the dust. And as is the one of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the one of dust, we will also bear the image of the one of heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. Ah, hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. I give you a new commandment. Love one another just as I have loved you. Ah, hallelujah. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. <clears throat> if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? <clears throat> For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. <clears throat> do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So to begin 
with today's first reading, Saul was the king of Israel and David was anointed by the prophet Samuel to take over from Saul. Now, as one might expect in such a situation, Saul wanted to keep his kingdom and get rid of David. And David was pursued by Saul and needed to defend himself, to protect himself. So this reading describes a situation in which David uh, came into a cavern and there he found Saul and some of his men sound asleep. And all that would be needed is one stroke of Saul's own spear which was stuck in the ground at his head. But the innate respect of David for Saul, who was anointed as king before him, and in a true sense was his father, that innate respect was too strong and David acted with compassion and magnanimity. From a human perspective, killing Saul would have been a triumph for him, and his battle to take over his kingdom would be over. But David did not go that route. He spared Saul and the conflict continued for a while, though matters were resolved fairly soon after. But still, David wanted his little moment of victory. He took Saul's spear with him when he left Saul's encampment. And the next morning, he called aloud to Saul from a distance and showed him that spear, which could have killed him while he slept. Now, Saul's reaction was a positive one. There was some reconciliation, and David became king. So David, as we know from his story in the Old Testament, was endowed with a real sense of compassion, which made of him a good ruler in spite of his many flaws. Now, the basic principle which led David to act as he did is expressed <coughs> in today's Gospel. We see so many examples in the scriptures and in our own daily life who live by the rule of tit for tat, <coughs> whose main purpose is to seek revenge, retribution, so as to maintain their reputation and their wealth. And all that we see around us makes us recognize that this negative approach permeates our world. Ultimately, the rule of each person for himself or herself <coughs> leads to warfare, violence, and a cycle of revenge that gets worse and worse. But as we look around us more carefully, we see many people who swim against this noxious current. People who are compassionate, forgiving, generous, and rather than returning evil for evil, they return good for evil. Now, those of us who are of a certain age, and I think that applies to pretty well all of us in the congregation, there are no kind of flaming youths here today. So those of us who are of a certain age, I think we might remember political leaders who were not caught up in their own petty agenda of self-aggrandizement and who were genuine agents of peace 
and justice and cooperation. Their agenda was a positive one rather than just simply the agenda of getting re-elected in the next election. These people gave us hope. And of course, there is a notable difference between a mere politician and a genuine statement. And in today's world, we often ask, who are the statesmen in our midst? Our problem is that we human beings often rely, like animals, on the simple option of fight or take flight. Now, we could be aggressive and prevail over the other force, uh, over, the, with, over the other person who is trying to get the better of us with force. Or else, we can retreat knowing that we will not have the power to prevail and take flight if we can. So, the situation in that kind of scenario is either win or lose. But there is a third option that we can take and David helps us see it. Now, David could have overcome his enemy. That the spear would have been very easy, but he chose not to. Nor did he flee. He abstained from violence, but on the next day, from a safe distance, he let Saul know what he did. And there was, as we can see from the text, a moment of reconciliation between them. In one sense, David lost the opportunity to become king more rapidly, but in another sense, he prevailed by letting Saul know what he had done. So there had perhaps was a bit of bragging there. I could see that Saul would uh, kind of uh, be very, very happy to kind of just kind of make sure that the point was made very, very clearly. Now, today's gospel passage carries our reflection further. It offers us part of Jesus' inaugural teaching as presented by Luke. Uh, in Matthew, we have the Sermon on the Mount, and in Luke, we have the Sermon on the Plain, and it's basically the same theme. So let us hear once again a few praises from that teaching. Love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you, if anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And, fr and from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Now, David engineered a moment where he could savor his spiritual triumph over Saul. <clears throat> One can imagine that his motivation was mixed and that when he was confronting Saul, there was some kind of a gleeful uh, savoring of a moment of triumph. Now, the poor marginalized persons that Luke is talking about as he presents Jesus' speech to the people, his teaching on the mount or in the plain, uh, these poor people were marginalized and did not have any power and they had no choice but to allow themselves to be treated badly. They had no choice but to go where they did not want to go, to submit to violence or injustice. Now, their reaction could be simply one of being passive, beaten down, 
and that's it. But Jesus invites them and us when we are in a situation like this to go the extra mile to give up our shirt as well as our coat. Now, what's the point of this? The point is to do something that will stop our opponent in his tracks. Invite him to reflect and let him know that in spite of what he has the power to do and what he has done, we have kept intact our dignity and our ability to forgive. Now, in some cases, this can be a stepping stone toward the positive re resolution of our differences. So, our, op our options are not just simply fight or take flight. They are fight or take flight or take a creative stand of some sort in dealing with the other person. And you know there are times where we are called upon to fight, in other times we are called upon to take flight, but there are those occasions where we can do that sort of special thing which maybe uh, might bring about a moment of reconciliation. All of these can be good options. And, well, obviously, we have to make a discernment. So, just imagine what this world would be like if this is how people <coughs> generally behave. Now, some people who have followed Christ's teaching in an exemplary way have made a big difference in our world. They create islands of hope, of peace, and of goodwill. <coughs> They forego violence. Now the interesting thing is that the example that comes to mind is not a Christian one. Uh, the person that comes to mind is Mahatma Gandhi in India, who basically was non-violent, who submitted, who let people walk over him. But ultimately, he generated the power that enabled uh, India to kind of uh, free itself from being a British possession and to start its own life as a nation, as a great nation. So basically, these people create islands of hope, of peace, and of goodwill. Now may each one of us here follow their example and do the same according to his or her circumstances. And may Jesus be our hope and our example. Now we know that he was like Gandhi. He allowed himself to be treated unjustly and to be put to death. Yet he triumphed, not just for himself, but also for each one of us. Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He descended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there we will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So let us now bring our prayers and petitions to our Heavenly God. The response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church and its leaders, 
called to stand in solidarity with victims of oppression and abuse. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Our prayer. <coughs> For world peace built on non-violence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the healing and empowerment of those among us who are victims of violence and oppression, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Our prayer. For God, for us, God's holy people, challenged to love our enemies, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Our prayer. For those in our parish family and among our loved ones who are ill, suffering or in convalescence, especially Carole Guillon, Shirley Ricardo, Clarice Mascarenas, John Henry, Monica Ballard, Bobby Squires, Maria Malorni, and Father Joe Sullivan, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We also pray in a special way for Elfino and Mariana Calce, for Mrs. Eileen O'Connor and René Fava, as well as for the healing of Pierce Corsi, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our hear our prayer. prayer for our own personal and private intentions. We pray to the Lord, 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 Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Let us ask Mother Mary to join us in our petitions. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our offertory hymn is The Lord's My Shepherd, number 689. The Lord's My Shepherd, 689. The Lord
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, and that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be joint heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The CT scan results were just received and all look clear. No evidence of cancer cells in the abdomen and chest. The family remains hopeful that the scans going forward will also be clear. And family, thank you for your prayers. Well, that's good news. Uh, there's a couple of announcements. There's some birthday greetings. André Ladigne is celebrating on the 21st. And on the 23rd, it's Luigi Montanaro, who's here, present, celebrating an anniversary on the 21st is Michel and Ravindran Kanya. Have a safe and wonderful week ahead, but first let us sing. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday Yeah. Uh -huh. 